In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to place an intravenous cannula and talk you through some tips and tricks for successful insertion. Intravenous cannulation is one of the most important skills for junior doctors to be able to perform. Cannulas are placed in patients so that they can be given medications that maybe can't be given orally for a number of reasons, and they can be used to resuscitate acutely unwell patients. It's also useful when placing an intravenous cannula to try and take blood off the back of the cannula to prevent stabbing the patient twice. The colour of the cannula relates to the diameter of the cannula. Blue cannulas are the smallest and it goes all the way up to orange cannulas which are the largest. Blue cannulas have a flow rate of about 43 mils per minute and are best used in children or elderly patients with difficult IV access. For most other people, a pink cannula is probably appropriate. These are the ones that can be used for CT, they can put contrast down them and you can run things through them at a fairly fast rate like fluids or blood. If you have a sick patient you want to put in a bigger cannula, a green cannula, a grey cannula if you can manage it or in a real emergency an orange cannula. These are the ones that we can give rapid amounts of transfusion down and so if your patient is sick the bigger you cannula you can get in the better. If you attach a bionectar or octopus device to a cannula you will limit the flow rate through that cannula. Here you can see the flow rate differences through the different sizes of cannula. However, if you add a device like a bionectar or an octopus to a grey cannula, you will reduce the flow through that cannula down to the same flow rate as a pink cannula. In practice, this doesn't have a huge amount of relevance on the wards, but if you're trying to resuscitate a patient and get a lot of volume into them quickly, take the octopus devices or the bionectors off your cannulas and put your fluid giving sets directly onto the back of the cannula so that you've got no restriction to the flow through that cannula. You can use a special wide bore giving set, such as a blood giving set, in an emergency. The next most important thing to think about is the site of placing the cannula. Putting cannulas on wrists or in elbows, while they're easy veins to get to, can be difficult for patients to tolerate. They can bend their arms or bend their wrists and kink the cannula so it doesn't flow properly, and these are more likely to come out or to tissue while the patient's in hospital. You also want to look at the skin quality. If the skin is edematous or looks broken, you don't want to place a cannula there because you're going to increase your risk of infection. A really important thing to check for is a patient who has a fistula for dialysis. If they have a fistula in that arm, you cannot use that arm to take blood or put a cannula in. You must use a different site. Gather your equipment and check you've got everything before you start. Introduce yourself to the patient, explain what you want to do and gain their consent. Next, put a tourniquet around the patient's arm and have a good look at different sites for a really good vein. Once you're happy with the vein and you can feel it, clean that site with an alcohol swab as per your hospital protocol and wait for that to dry and open your cannula. If you're going to use an octopus or giving set, now is the time to flush the octopus so that it's ready to be attached to the cannula once it's inserted. Hold the patient's hand or arm and put skin traction onto the hand or arm so that the vein is not going to move. Insert your cannula at an appropriate angle. If the vein is quite superficial and close to the surface of the skin, then you might want to use a much more shallow angle. If you're going for a deeper vein or you're using an ultrasound, the angle will need to be much more steep. Look for flashback in the chamber and try to advance the plastic tube off the end of the stylet. Push the tube in all the way up to the top you don't want any of it sticking out of the skin, and remove the stylet. Place your finger over the distal part of the cannula to close the vein so that you don't get blood coming back. A little bit of blood is fine and is to be expected. This is the point where you can now take blood off the back of the cannula. You can either use a syringe to do this or use the vacutainer adapter and bottles just as you normally would if taking blood. Once you've got all your blood samples, remove your syringe or adapter and take off your tourniquet at this point. Put on your octopus or bionectar and flush your cannula. Check the patient's not in any pain. They may feel a cold sensation up their arm. This is fine. You should also look at where the tip of the cannula is to see if there's any sign of the skin ballooning. This would suggest that the cannula has come out of the vein and is tissued. If you're happy with your cannula placement, dress the cannula and make sure that the entire cannula is covered. 
You need to put a time and date sticker on the cannula so that people know when it went in and can check that it's still okay to be used. Some tips and tricks for getting your cannulas in. So you need to have your tourniquet on properly. It needs to be nice and tight so that it's going to stop blood coming back from the veins and they're going to have a chance to fill up. Use gravity to help you hang the arm off the side of the bed and get below the patient. Keep the arm dependent so that it's got a chance to fill up with blood. You can gently tap or rub a vein to try and stimulate nitric oxide release to allow the vein to engorge. Another thing you can try to do is use a heat source like a glove full of warm water or a heat pad to encourage the vein to dilate. For agitated or confused patients or in children, use a local anaesthetic cream when placing the cannula to prevent it from being sore. You might want to get someone to come and help you hold the patient's hand in a good position, but be really careful about getting sharp injuries while doing this. If you're going to use something bigger than a pink cannula, consider giving local anaesthetic as a subcut injection to your patient to make this more comfortable. The bigger cannulas can hurt as they go in. It's really tempting to go for veins that we can see, just aiming for the blue, but actually the best veins are the ones you can feel. Make sure that your patient is in a good position and that you're comfortable as well. Take your time to pick a good vein. Try to avoid ones that have been used multiple times and have got signs of phlebitis or sclerosis around those veins. For example, if the veins are scarred, they're probably going to be phlebosed or sclerosed. There's a small distance between the tip of the needle and the plastic tube, which means you may not be entirely in the vein, even if you're getting blood back in the chamber. The tube should advance smoothly off the tip of the needle. If you cannot advance the tube, you might have the needle tip in the vein, but not have the plastic tube. Put the needle back all the way into the cannula and try to advance the whole cannula a little further into the vein, just a couple more millimetres. You might even feel a give as it goes through the side of the vein wall. At this point, you should try to advance your tube off the tip of the cannula again. Another thing that can happen is transecting a vein. This is when you get into the vein, you get your flashback, and then when you advance the tube off, you've actually gone through the back of the vein and you're no longer within that vein. So you won't see your secondary flashback. What you need to do here is re-advance the needle all the way through the cannula, pull back a couple of millimeters and try and advance the tube off the tip of the needle again. At this point, you should see your secondary flashback and it will suggest you're in the vein. If, it, if these tips don't work, take the cannula out, pick a different site and try again. How many goes should I have? Well, it depends. If this is really necessary and you're the only person around, you might need to take a few goes to get the cannula in. Sometimes it's just not your day and somebody else will need to come and help you. In general, if I've tried two or three times and there's nothing else I can change, like getting a glove full of hot water or changing the patient's position, I will go and ask someone to help me with this cannula. As you get more confident, try using things like an ultrasound to rescue your cannula attempts, but this shouldn't be used first line. In general, cannula shouldn't stay in for more than 72 hours due to the risk of a bloodborne infection like Staph aureus bacteremia. If you're looking at a cannula and there's any sign of redness around the cannula, assume the cannula is infected and remove it. The last thing is accidentally cannulating an artery. So it's really useful to check whether there's a pulse in the vessel that you're aiming for before you put the cannula in, but it happens to everybody. You take your stylet out and you've got pulse tile flow coming back. Not to worry. Take the cannula out of the artery straight away, put a dressing on, cotton wool, and press hard for three to five minutes. When the patient no longer needs a cannula, ensure that it's removed appropriately. Take the dressing off, get a piece of cotton wool or gauze ready, place it over the cannula, and smoothly pull the cannula out of the vein. This should be painless. Dispose of the cannula into a clinical waste or sharps bin.